Back to this uh, big story today that Spark Sport uh, are having to basically abandon uh, their online streaming of cricket and uh, they had all of the domestic cricket, including everything from internationals to domestic competitions to ODIs to T20s and uh, the beneficiary of their bad luck, I suppose, is uh, TVNZ who have a kind of like a production relationship anyway uh, with the Spark Sport and we're going to show and probably will show some matches anyway regardless of what's happened to uh, Spark Sport. But with me now is the sports manager from TVNZ, an old broadcasting friend of mine, Melody Robinson. Melody, very good afternoon to you. Yeah, nice to catch up with you today. Um, so I imagine uh, there's probably a few sheepish smiles, are there, on faces of uh, TVNZ management today with this little Christmas bonus that's fallen into your lap? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, some sheer outward excitement from some people, like uh, Guy Havelt down in the sports news this morning who told me that we've given him the best Christmas present he could possibly ever have. So, um, yeah, we're super excited uh, to bring all that free-to-air cricket um, to New Zealanders. Um, And also, at the same time, I think we'd have to acknowledge that Spark Sport has been a great partner of ours, and they gave it a a really good shot, and they set up a new technology platform and have have done a fabulous job with that um, commentary team and broadcast that they've set up. So it is a bit bittersweet, particularly for people like Jeff Latch, who have really worked hard to try and make that a massive success. I wonder whether it's just a case of that New Zealand isn't big enough in terms of its population to kind of justify uh, having both a Sky Sport uh, operation and another uh, sporting streamline uh, exercise like Spark Sport because, in fact, although competition is supposed to lower prices, in fact, in this case here with pay TV sport, the more there is, the more the viewer has to pay. Yeah, it's actually... you probably hit the nail on the head. Uh, We have got a tiny market compared to others um, around the world. You know, France, um, UK, they can have plenty of different content providers and then, you know, everybody knows we've had this big uh, industry disruption with Netflix and Amazon Prime, etc. So that competition is super, super difficult. And then, do you know what? Spark launched uh, a platform just when COVID, uh, just before COVID happened as well. So um, that made things very challenging too. Um, uh, for them with, with quite a few of the sports um, cancelled too. So, yep, look, it's, it is bittersweet, but um, in terms of TVNZ and for New Zealanders generally being able to watch this um, all free um, and either on a, um, you know, a traditional channel like One or Duke or we're going to put um, a bit of development in our TVNZ uh, Plus platform as well um, and put together a lovely events hub so the experience that Kiwis will get on TVNZ Plus will be brilliant as well. So why do you have to wait until the 1st of July to take over this uh, portfolio of cricket? Why couldn't it uh, essentially happen from now? Um, That works better with the end of the cricket season, which goes through to April. Um, And most of the new competitions are starting around about that time. So there's only one or two um, of the other sports on the Spark platform uh, that um, are just yet to finish, which will carry over some of those competitions. Um, So, yeah, so that date seems to work really, really well. Also, it gives us a bit of time to invest and develop TVNZ Plus platform ready to roll so that New Zealanders um, who want to access it on TVNZ Plus will get a very similar experience that they do have on Spark Sport now. So just clarify a few things for me here, Melody. So it's not just uh, Spark Sport cricket that is gone. All of the sports that currently are showing on Spark Sport, uh, all of them will go. Is that correct? Yeah, so we're hoping to um, be uh, rights holders for the majority of the, those sports. So Spark is currently talking to all of uh, the different sports bodies uh, around the world that they hold um, the licence rights to. And if they are happy to come over to TVNZ, then we'll be having those sports uh, on TVNZ as well. So is, I'd imagine this would be quite a complex commercial contractual issue, wouldn't it? Or is it quite simple that um, they just say, look, we can't continue to broadcast anymore because we can't make it work financially, but we can give it to the country's biggest free-to-air broadcaster, TVNZ, and most of these companies or sports, international sports bodies are saying yes. 
I'd, I hope so, because I tell you what, they're going to get so much more exposure yeah, yeah. Um, on TVNZ Plus and on our channels, and how exciting is that for them? So, yeah, um, look, it is complex, and um, I have to say our teams, um, the legal teams in particular, have done one heck of a job over the last um, wee while to get this done before Christmas. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been full on, and um, we're really happy to be in this position right now. Definitely got all of the cricket confirmed, and then we're just waiting on those other contracts. I imagine you're not getting all this product for nothing, that you're having to pay uh, Spark Sports something for all these cricket matches you're going to be broadcasting. Oh, you're a tricky broadcaster asking me a question like that. Um, <laughs> all of the commercial uh, side of the deal is uh, confidential. Um, New Zealand Cricket confirmed today that they're on the same commercial deals, um, so um, they're very happy. But, yeah, no, we don't talk about... I guess the background um, behind most of these um, rights deals, um, just because it's such a competitive market to try and even get. Well, no, I, I'm fully aware of that. I don't th think for a moment, yeah. didn't think for a moment that you're going to give me um, chapter and verse <laughs> of what, what's going on here. But uh, just in a general sense, uh, you're not getting all of this product for nothing. Oh, look, we, TVNZ is, is going to make a, an investment um, over the next three years to, um, you know, make sure that this is a great experience for New Zealanders. So we've got some investment going into TVNZ+. Plus. We're going to have some new jobs open up. Um, so, yeah, so we're definitely investing um, in making sure this is awesome for Kiwis. Okay, d d down to some practical production matters. Are you going to be using the Spark Sport cricket commentators or will you go out and recruit your own team? Look, Telf, I reckon um, Jeff Latch and Alex Lewis, executive producer, have done a very, very good job in setting up a cricket commentary team from scratch. Um, they've, you know, provided them training. They are, I would say, international class commentators, so we don't anticipate um, much of a change to that team. We think um, they've done a great job. OK. Um, however, it's usually the case, isn't it, that when a sport goes from one channel to another, that the new channel likes to sort of stamp it with its own commentators rather than just sort of taking people over from the uh, pr previous rights holders. But however, so we'll have to wait and see. So oh, we can... Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure a couple of people will put their hands up from TVNZ to be added in there for sure because there's some pretty passionate cricket um, peeps in, in TVNZ at the moment. So, I mean... Go I'm going back in time here, but I can remember many times in my career at TVNZ doing uh, outside broadcasts on a Sunday afternoon, and it's five minutes to six, and the last group, including the, the two leaders in the golf, are coming down the 17th hole with one more to play when someone from the continuity suite uh, in town says, OK, golf, that's it, stop, we've got the news now, and we would leave... <laughs> we would leave the golf or we would leave a cricket match, you know, with about two overs to go because nothing could get in the way of of One News or TVNZ News at 6 o'clock or TV3s for that matter at 6 o'clock if the live sport was on their channel. I don't imagine you'll have that problem anymore, will you, now that you've got a couple of other channels in, in, your, in, in yeah. your disposal? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it is a challenge, that because you, you, um, if you remember with America's Cup as well, we had... Um, real challenges because some of the races were going so um, late and so we would usually switch those viewers over to Duke. Um, so Duke does give us that flexibility. Yeah. The great yeah. thing about um, TVNZ Plus um, is that we can continue exactly the same feed on TVNZ Plus. So um, if you are viewing that through your smart TV, it's probably if you can just continue watching that um, what we call a DVR asset. Um, so we've got definitely got a few more tricks up our sleeve to deal with, with that stuff. But you're right, live sport is um, tricky, and we have also negotiated with um, our six o'clock news team at times to get an extra five or ten minutes um, into their news bully. So we're pretty experienced at that now, um, and we'll try and keep that um, experience of watching the sport as seamless as possible. Mm. It's, it's, it's chilling in some ways when I think about it, just getting, moving on to another topic here. When I was watching Spark Sport recently, it might have been the world, I don't know, T20 uh, competition or something, and I was watching Spark, and I was really impressed when, uh, you know, changed over and it's got all of the uh, product that's available over the next few days, and they go through each sport, and I'm thinking, ah, oh, they really are starting to build a very credible kind of portfolio here of good international uh, interesting sport from all around the world and a bit from New Zealand as well. And I said, oh, it's taken a couple of years, but they're getting there now. And then, bingo, a few weeks later, they've gone. And it just shows you how tough it is in this market, isn't it? I think something similar happened, uh, as you probably would recall, at Sky, 
when Sky lost the US PGA golf and a small operation started here in New Zealand. It couldn't make it work and it didn't last and the golf went back to um, Sky TV and I think something similar might have happened with the football. Sky lost the football and it went to another a, a small operation in New Zealand. They couldn't make it work and it's been to Spark and it's gone back to Sky. So um, it's tough, isn't it, to make pay TV on sport work in New Zealand? Yeah, it is tough. Um, but interestingly, um, it seems that free live sport is even more important um, to free-to-air TV because, you know, uh, obviously we're having a lot of um, audience shifting from traditional TV into the streaming products and stuff. But one thing that we know does work are large sports or large events. Um, so, yeah, so it's definitely something that we have had in our strategy and we've been trying to sign up um, a lot more sports for TVNZ um, because it really does help our linear audiences stay robust and it also gets all the online mm. streamers. So, yeah, it's a really tough market um, to get into that. The, you, the, the guys that actually started um, and, and took the golf back in the day when that business failed, they actually ended up doing rugby pass um, and learned a lot of lessons from that first experience, oh, okay. experiment, and mm. now, of course, they, they've sold um, Rugby Pass to Sky, who then on sold it to World Rugby. So um, <laughs> they've done a really great job with that. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. Just before I let you go, Melody, yeah. I'm, I must just get some thoughts from yours on what you made of the Black Ferns. You, of course, a former uh, Black Fern yourself, and I imagine you probably would have been in one or two of those teams that won World Championships, right? I was, yes, 98 and 2002, um, won it with those um, versions of the team. And, you know, I can remember in Barcelona in 2002, we probably had around about 50 people watching this live. (laughs) Um, So to see, finally, kids, families, sold out um, audiences, you know, a a live sport event with a bit of music as well as that team playing excessively exciting rugby um, pretty much I was walking on cloud nine and living my best dream over that Rugby World Cup. And, I'm and very, very proud of that team. Very I, happy for them. I bet somewhere along the line towards the end or at the end there might have been the odd tear in your eye as well, probably. Oh, 100%. I, was, I have been really emotional about it because that sets up the stage for other women's sports to mm, do mm. a similar t- type of tournament and get lots of young kids and cheaper tickets, you know, how exciting is that? It seems to me that finally um, women's sports starting to get a really good following um, and it, on its own, so and, it's just great. And not before time. And did you have much to do with the team while they were playing? I um, No, I, I did one presentation for them um, during the week, but I was doing quite a bit of work actually for host and um, was allowed to do some commentary for Spark Sport, which was nice because that's my passion um, mm. that I you know, don't do very often much anymore, being in the role that I am, but it was lovely to be there. Um, and I also hosted a couple of lounges, which was a lot of fun. <laughs> and are, you, are you playing any golf yet? Oh, I'm so glad you've asked. I've just taken it up. I'm a member of Remuera Golf Club. Oh, and dear, oh, dear. Yeah. Remuera. Oh. I was going to. I was going. I was going to think. Oh, I'll invite you over to my club, Akarana, but um, you probably wouldn't oh, play at Akarana, would you? If you're a member at Remuera. Well, no, no, I've come down there because obviously Marcus still does a bit of work at Akarana. Yeah, it um, does. Yeah, and my son did quite a few lessons there. I actually played in a tournament yesterday, a charity tournament. I wasn't very good, but I had Jensen on my bag, my son. <laughs> he's 13, and he is so good that I got him to do most of my shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, good on you. Yeah, my dear wife at the age of 65 last year decided to take up golf, and I couldn't persuade her otherwise. I thought, darling, I've been playing golf since I was 15, and I still can't even master the sport. Don't take it up when you're in your <laughs> mid-60s, please. But but she's actually, as I speak, she's playing Takapuna every Friday afternoon with her, some of her old mates from TVNZ because she's an ex-TVNZ producer and they just absolutely love this game. Um, I think she shot 120 last week, which was her best score, but she was very happy. She's coming down quickly. Right. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, so oh. that is great. Um, can you, good on it. Do you get coached by your husband or is that a good idea to have your husband coaching you in golf? Uh, yes, he does coach uh, all of us oh, and okay. he is, um, as you know, he is a very good coach he and is? I do listen to him. Yeah, oh, good, yeah. good. Okay, anyway, Melody, nice to catch up with you again and thank you for this uh, informative chat about uh, TVNZ and its uh, new cricket deal and we wish you well. Thank you very much.